All right, Solar Ken back with another video on the 10 solar hacks. So how to save money with your solar panel system so that you don't have no electricity bills ever again. You've already made the smart decision on investing in solar already. And now you want to know how to maximize your solar output. Here are 10 tips to get the most out of your solar power. Number one, use your appliances during the day. By putting your heavy loads, like your dishwasher, your dryer, your washing machine, those loads on during the day, you actually are running off of solar power only, which means you're not actually using power from the utility grid, which means you're only using what you produce. Now, mind you, you wanna make sure that you have enough solar power credits to cover your usage during the daytime or at night when you actually, so you don't wanna use every single thing at the same time, but try to stagger as much as you possibly can, which is number two, is staggering your consumption. Like, you wanna make sure that you are using your power during the production of the day, which is like a 12 to about two, before you actually start to get hit with the really, really hard charges whenever you use your power the most, because most home people are home from two to four to two to seven or whatever the, the peak hours is for your particular utility company. But yeah, you wanna make sure you're staggering your, you, your appliances and not using them all at the same time. So use your dryer, use your washer, or use your washer, use your dryer, or then use your dishwasher or AC. Never have them all on at the same time because you're pulling a heavy load. Number three is gonna be heating or slash cooling your home in the afternoon. So when your sun is producing the most power for your home, this is when you want to be using the power that you're producing from the sun. That way you can only be using solar power versus using power from the utility grid. Again, use your power while you got it because you're producing it at this time. You're, act, you're not actually buying power from the utility company, so it makes the most sense. Number four, you want to make sure that you keep the home and your solar panels free of debris and any shading. What I mean by that is you want to make sure that the system is not covered by any trees that have grown over the last time that since they've been installed and then making sure that there's no leaves or obstructing objects covering your panels during the duration of you having the system on top of your roof. Number five, keeping your panels clean. What I mean by that is there can be bird droppings, dust, snow, whatever it is. Just make sure you're keeping your panels clean of any obstructing objects like the dust or the bird droppings cleaning them at least three, once every quarter, if not once every three to five months to make sure that the, the system is producing what it's supposed to do, produce because as a system is clean, it produces a lot better versus it being dirty and obstructed by anything like dirt, dirt or bird poop. Number six, use energy efficient appliances in the household. What I mean by that is LED light bulbs, energy efficient appliances like your washer, dryer, refrigerator, air conditioner, upgrade those if need be because those is gonna keep you from using as many kilowatt hours as you were before because they are more efficient than I guess the last unit was. Another thing that you can do for the home is making sure that you clean out the vents and make sure that the vents are sealed up like an aerosol product that keeps the, the vents a lot cooler or actually keeps the air from leaving the vents into the walls of the attic. That way that you can have a lot cooler home without having to run a, a AC a lot harder. Number seven, shop for the best rate. And what I mean by that is if you have a deregulated market like you, like we do in Texas, you can shop around for the best utility rate that you could possibly get from the utility company. Now that's going to be kind of hard depending on if you're in a, a market where there isn't deregulated energy, where you're going to actually be stuck with one utility company, but you can always go to that utility company to see if there's a better plan to see if you can actually get on that produces a more, or maybe they changed, they recently changed their plan for their solar buyback and maybe you wanna be either a grandfathered into their old one, or like I said, into one of the newer plans that actually works better for the time that you actually are at home. Number eight, so adding a battery could be a great option for a home. If you're exporting more than 12 kilowatt hours for the home, and you live in like a hurricane prone zone or a blackout, heavily blackout zone like California, sometimes in Texas, 
where you might need a battery backup just to carry on and keep your house, like I said, running when, when there's issues, when it comes down to natural disasters, stuff like that. Most people don't realize that you can lose about two to $300 every time over there is a blackout because of bad food, food going bad, if not more. I've seen homeowners lose three to $600 because the deep freezers went bad, the freezers uh, went bad. Sometimes that even when a blackout happens and it shorts out your circuits, you can lose a refrigerator because of the issues and some people have experienced in that before. So having a backup battery source it could be a, a A1 issue that can be solved by just doing the right things by your home and adding the backup source. Number nine is going to be seasonal changes. Like seasonal changes can be a great thing because you can adjust how much you're using during the seasons and obviously produce more in the summertime than you're going to probably produce in the winter time just because of sun hours and the way that you use in power during that time but at the same time you can store those credits from those seasons for the time to come depending on which utility company you have number 10 is monitoring your system usage like i couldn't harp on this even more like knowing how much your system is producing on a daily basis is going to be ideal for any particular homeowner just so you can guess get a feel of what's actually going on with your utility usage and consumption you want to know exactly how much you're consuming and when you should if where you shouldn't it's the data that makes the most sense when you have the data of like knowing your usage in the past you can predict the usage for the future so you know what there's going to be a hot day coming up you know what to set your thermostat to so you can actually save more power that way you as a homeowner can be i guess aware of what the utility savings is going to be for that particular month and that's going to give you pretty much everything you need to know from your solar edge apps or your in-phase apps that are going to monitor your system for you over the course of your system's lifespan so again these are your top 10 solar hacks if you haven't done so already like i said please go like comment and subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell i'm going to be dropping way more content so you guys can i guess you make an educated decision if you haven't made one already about going solar if you want to get in touch with me please go to solarcannonenergyking.com book a call with me there go to all my social medias at Solar Cannon Energy King. and if you're looking to guess go solar and you want to give me a shout out leave a comment below my name is Solar Ken and I'm out. Thanks.